So we'll start off and uh, everyone starts like, you should read, you should read a lot. Uh, I, I was like looking I mean, at radiology is a huge field. Medical school is not really applicable to it at all. Every month you go to a different service which has no relation to the service you were on the month before. So you go from nukes to mammo to abdomen. There's all these diseases that you haven't, that you haven't heard about. And I found these pictures of like some, uh, some neuroradiology books. And I was looking at like the Amazon pages for them and they're like heavy. Like this Osborne book is 8.6 pounds. This is Jim's book, 7.2 pounds. This picture, I'm not kidding, this is from Amazon. I don't know what they're trying to say about this book. <laughs> they're putting it like, I don't know if they're trying to say that it's like a manageable size or that it's as big as a person, <laughs> but it weighs four pounds. This is like 20 pounds of books. This is just neuro. That is a lot. Um, so you should read. I mean, I think that's like very valuable. On the other hand, I, I mean, what, what do you do? Like people are like, read two hours a day, three hours a day, 10 hours a day. Like, where do you stop? Like, you just like stop sleeping, put Barkovich's book like under your pillow, maybe. I think you should read a ton of studies, okay? And uh, now you should read, but it, you will be better served if every day you pick up two or three extra studies. When it's 4.30 and there's like extra stuff on the list and you could let the fellow read it, the fellows will read it. Like, it's not a problem. It's not a problem for me to read like an extra head CT, no big deal. But you will gain more from that than you will from reading later. Those things that you see like in the studies, they will stick. The two hours a day, if you guys are reading two hours a day, you're either lying or just amazingly compulsive. And I think there are people who are able to do it, but I was not that kind of person. I learned from cases. I learned from seeing a lot of stuff in the reading room. And I think that uh, that's my advice to you guys. Don't tell soon me I told you guys that. She probably says you guys need to read two hours a day. It's really? being recorded. Don't tell soon <laughs> me that I said this. Uh, that said, you, you should read. I mean, you should do some outside stuff. I, I think it's reasonable to like choose realistic goals, read realistic books, the case-oriented books, something short about a patient that you saw. If you saw a patient that has some interesting disease, uh, brain lymphoma, whatever it is, like uh, then, then take a look, cholesteatoma. Go look up those things because that's the things that you remember. And uh, so the high value neuro books, like when you're starting as a resident, these are two books which I think are really useful. Uh, this, so this guy, Mauricio, Mauricio Casillo, he's like in North Carolina. He wrote this huge book called Neuroradiology and it's huge. And they came out then with a smaller book which is supposed to be the companion to it. So it's called Neuroradiology Companion. This book is way better than the big book. You can actually read it. It's like a manageable amount. It's like a case per page, a little bit of information. You can sit down for 20 minutes and get a lot out of that. These case review books like brain, like brain imaging here are also very good. There's some other series that are very similar. I think there's one called like Rad Files or something. I find these to be extremely beneficial. When I sit down like with requisites, I like fall asleep immediately or just want to go do something else. I think that these like stick a little more. 